We don't have any sound. Number of channels. Ras. Oh yeah, that's good. I like it. Now let's check it out. What do we have here? So we have a carrier frequency at uh, 500 hertz. And it gets modulated by the uh, modulating signal with the frequency of now something like 0.1 hertz. And the uh, modulation width on the frequency axis is, uh, okay, let's put it like 20, 20 hertz. Yeah. So that's the biggest uh, deviation from the 500 hertz now. Now let's increase the modulating frequency. And what we will see is that once it passed around something like 20, the carrier frequency is now always in place and we start seeing the sidebands uh, to the left and right from the carrier frequency. And let's put it to something like 50 Hz for clarity. And what we see next is that um, once we get those uh, values in the spectrum, those harmonics in the spectrum, because these are harmonics actually, uh, now the width controls the width of the whole spectral shape generated. Yeah, we can call it the format actually. Uh, now, what's interesting is that the the step between every generated component on the frequency axis is equal to the modulating frequency. When we increase the modulating frequency, as we see the, 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 the spectrum, generated spectrum stretches to the left and right from the carrier frequency. And once it reaches the zero, as in this example, the frequencies start to reflect. Yeah. And now all the components go to the right. Once the modulator frequency and the carrier frequencies are equal, now the step is equal to the carrier frequency. Yeah? So the carrier is 500. Yeah? The next to the left, 500 minus 500 is zero. So we get something at DC. The second left side band component now is at 500 hertz. So it's summed to the carrier signals uh, fundamental. The third uh, left side band component is layered upon the first right side band and so on. And that's why in particular when we have like 2 to 1 ratio carrier, the, the, the modulator to carrier 2 to 1 and 4 to 1, we have kind of the same spectrum. Yeah. But the amplitude relationships are different because now the different sidebands get uh, overlaid on top of each other and their amplitudes are different just because of that. Uh, okay. Now let's go back to the principle of uh, to the case of the modulator frequency is lower equal or lower than the carrier frequency. So in most cases it will be lower. That's what I want to play with in this video in order to show how we can utilize FM in order to make uh, make four months, generate four months. By having this fundamental let's say now at 100 hertz that's just a sinusoid for now and by having a generated format I can now uh, uh, increase the step between those guys by using this stretch stretch factor this stretch control is actually the value by which the modulation of frequency are multiplied in the modulator argument only with the modulator yeah this guy which provides the fundamental or amplifies the fundamental that we should have is uh, still getting sorry here it's still getting the 
the, 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 the value that was specified by modulation or frequency control so this way we can also play with uh, uh, which harmonics we want to get in the spectrum we want to have or not and so on and of course this way we will get aliasing and well basically that's why we want it we want to play with harmonics and we get different harmonics because of the aliasing in particular <clears throat> Now let's take a look at the next example in which I will have not a sinusoid and a modulator as it was uh, in previous in this code block. Well, it was just like this. Yeah, modulator. I didn't, didn't show this the, the, the code itself. Uh, let let now see what it is. Uh, it's a modulator which is a sinusoid. Uh, with the modulational frequency provided by the slider, yeah, multiplied by another slider value, which is stretch, and then the carrier frequency, which is another slider's value, uh, is um, added to the modulator, the modulating signal itself, the sinusoid, which is multiplied uh, by the width parameter, the modulation width parameter. Okay. Now that we have this guy will be the FM operator multiplied by something which is which will control its amplitude and we add to this FM variable operator yeah we add to it the sinusoid just a sinusoid okay now that's simple now I don't want to have this sinusoid because I can have only uh, uh, carriers or even just a modulating signal at that place um, yeah the modulational sinusoid itself well basically what this is this sinusk MFR is same as this yeah but since I want to have the ability to stretch the spectrum I use a different one but I can also do a different thing. With this next code block, uh, we have the modulating frequency being controlled by the freq parameter. And from now, I will treat the fundamental as the modulation frequency. The modulating frequency will control our fundamental now. Now the carrier frequencies, I have two carrier signals. They all use their own carrier frequencies, which are specified as a modulator frequency multiplied by the four month zero and four month one uh, control signals. Yeah. To this thing, I then add the modulator with their with corresponding with uh, control signals. Okay. So I have one modulator and two carrier signals. Let's listen to the first one. Now with this first one. I want to have the ratio of equal to 1. So what I do is I put the stretch to 1. I put the formant to the first spectral company, company. So the carrier frequency, the center of the formant, is now on the fundamental. So this will always provide the fundamental in place for me. Now the second one, let's place it at the third format or fourth format, yeah? Uh, or on fourth harmonic. The center of the center of the format is now on the fourth harmonic. Okay. So what I have now is this type of structure. So I have this fundamental, some harmonics, I can control how much with this width parameter. Let's make the width smaller. It can be minimized to the extent that I always, I only will have a carrier signal. Or I can make it rather wide. Okay. So this is a key, key, key principle. And now 
after that after i set up some structure of course i can stretch that thing as i showed before and have a more interesting spectrum okay now let's build a synthesizer with this principle so what i have here is a synthesizer with uh, one modulator and uh, five carrier signals what i have here let's put these things to zero the fundamental the fundamental base let's put this to one uh, as it was the width will be a bit smaller for now okay now i have the four mount at two here is the two yeah and three let's make them a bit narrower so here's the one and here's the second one so if not this here's the second one now what I want to um, show now is that we have actually with this approach we have two big problems big problems the first one is that I can only move the center center of the format by integers this the maximum value of the format can only be at the harmonic and not between the harmonics so if I slide this thing it goes with steps I don't I, I'm not able to slide that yeah without discontinuities okay now how do I manage this thing is there a workaround of course there is a workaround and workaround is to cross fade between adjacent uh, adjacent uh, formats so for every format I should have actually one modulator and two carriers and I should cross fade between them that is not quite mm, convenient thing to do yeah but well, I can do that and that's why I have actually five here one for the fundamental and four for two formats so that I would be able to place the center of the format in between some harmonics now that's the first problem of course that's solvable uh, but some amount of code should be sh sh should be introduced and in, in a pseudo uni generator uh, I guess so because uh, if you want to slide the, the shape that generated formant shape on the frequency axis they should now work like this yeah as they go from zero to Nyquist, they should go like this, always crossfading into one and one another. The other problem is the simulation of a resonating body. Here you can see I have what I would call a single piece or single sample of a generalized mechanoacoustical um, reference. Now it has an exciter. Let me remove this. Yeah. It has an exciter. It has a vibrator. Yeah. And a resonator. So if we will think according to this reference, what we have is in those three lectures the four month central frequencies were following the fundamental and if they follow the fundamental then according to this reference what we module is this we model we simulate this thing but not this thing because this thing doesn't follow the fundamental the shape doesn't change at all so the central frequencies for the four months are always in place now how can we uh, simulate this thing with uh, FM synthesis? We will have to control the amplitude 
of the generated format and so when the spectrum goes higher than the uh, modeled uh, resonance of the acoustical body we will have to control the amplitude of that format and remove it yeah multiply it by zero so this can be done but it's a lot of calculations a lot of hassle to organize all this stuff and at the end of the day will it give a lot to us and that's why why I use a hybrid of FM and uh, subtractive because using subtractive synthesis it's a very simple thing to do so why bother so what I do next in this next code block I add the, the clank unit generator which is a bank of uh, bandpass filters resonating bandpass filters I specify an array of frequencies just from the top of my head and um, amplitudes corresponding ampli amplitudes for every filter and the <coughs> ring times which is the how much it will take a filter to decay by 60 decibels yeah or in other words how much will it lengthen the impulse characteristic yeah impulse characteristic so let's hear what it does here's all the thing without the filters and now with the filter let's make it a bit more obvious so that it will be more exaggerated effect you see now the bass frequency is those about uh, 120 hertz uh, become louder they resonate a bit more and so uh, yeah of course let's all also dive into this thing what we have now is the as I already told is the modulator uh, which has uh, a bit different frequencies for the left and right channels <coughs> as usual just to provide some beatings and width uh, so I use this modulator which is multiplied by the envelope so that as I told before the modulation index or amplitude of the modulator uh, is a first correlate of brightness yeah, so I multiply it by the envelope so that when the amplitude goes to the maximum the brightness is also on the maximum and when it, when, when it dies out the, the brightness also uh, decreases so higher frequencies become <coughs> uh, become lower than the low frequencies I have five uh, five carrier signals and their corresponding frequencies and uh, then I multiply every carrier or operator yeah at this level at this stage it's it's an operator yeah the modulator is in this a fair variable 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 and uh, I multiply every one of them by the same envelope and the same envelope gets uh, calculated to the power of corresponding value it can be di different values just something like without <coughs> fiddling too much and uh, I create five amp parameters uh, so that so that I can control the amplitudes of the formats yeah let's take a look at the spectrum let's make this 
fixed frequency yeah um this is the spectrum so what i have here the fundamental the fundamental and a couple of harmonics then the four month at two at second harmonic then the format at third, sorry, at third harmonic. I can balance between them if I want the peak of the format to be somewhere in between second and third harmonic. And the high one, just for fun. It's the same thing, they are on seventh and eighth harmonic. And of course, they are they are also adjacent seven, then eight, so I can uh, mix between them and get the four months maximum at desired place on the frequency axis. And of course, I can control the four months width uh, with the same width parameter, so I can make, for example, the higher uh, four months lower in volume example but bigger in their width yeah and the end thing okay we have this basic very very uh, intuitive uh, structure with all, all the harmonics and now I can play with the stretch parameter to let's say omit some of the uh, harmonics Now the modulators. <coughs> you can see some modulation already here, yeah. Uh, but uh, let's go even further. As I mentioned before in the first video, and uh, probably in every video before that, that the good thing is to make some beatings between those generated formats, yeah, so that they are not quite on their places to simulate not the let's say the only one vibrator but let's say three of them where every one of them is uh, tuned to the same frequency yeah but since in the mechanical acoustical world it's well, it's almost impossible to tune them so that they are all perfectly at uh, one frequency value the thing is, even when we strike them at once, they vibrate with some tiny differences because of the mass parameter, yeah, their mass and their... All, all, all those physical parameters, let's not dive into that too much now. But we can go even further, not only introducing those beatings, but playing with the frequency of the beatings in time. So, that can be achieved by making a cascade so there will be a modulator that modulates the whole that generates generated single format let's say single format let's show a single format you know you see here's the number four number four um uh, this is the one here yeah? let's put it to something like this Now you see it vibrates around, yeah, around that um, original position, and we can go even further if we assign it to the modulating frequency, the frequency of the modulator of the modulator. Now we have even more dense, uh, dense spectrum with some additional components, but still the original components are present in the spectrum. So we can play with this to make even more interesting, <coughs> even more interesting timbres. Okay, now let's build a synthesizer. So the 
all before mentioned structures here the only difference is that now I add that pink noise here and uh, I play I add the low frequency noise to the envelope yeah here are the modulators let's bring them in although I would like to remove the pink noise for now now let's listen to how it sounds Just checking. <coughs> Here's the pink noise. What I hear from this is a sense of space uh, comes to the comes to mind. It's kind of sense of room. Yeah. What I do, I just modulate the modulator's phase with the pink noise. I I basically showed this kind of example in the first FM synthesis, yeah? But now that we have this reference, this becomes a bit unnatural thing. Because we have a spatial component generated at the exciter, uh, at the, sorry, yeah, exciter vibrator level, at this level. Uh, basically, what space is, according to this, uh, model it's another resonator inside of which this thing is present yeah let's take a look at how this uh, bad G string vibrates you hear that nasty noise it's kind of the same thing as the strings un under the snare drum yeah but only one so what if we will imagine what if we will imagine this pink noise in our modeled vibrator as kind of the uh, uh, um, exaggeration of the idea of this kind of uh, uh, snare noise, the string noise. Now I add the original sound of all that FM thing without the uh, resonators, subtractive resonators, to the filtered one. The last thing I didn't talk about is the is this uh, E or our envelope power to the value which is uh, which is uh, expressed as expressed as the modulation frequency but linearly mapped from some frequency range to from 1 to 3 so what that means is if the frequency is lower I want the power value to be 1 if the frequency is higher I want the power value to be higher which goes to 3 and if the power value is at 3 that means the envelope which, uh, which was like this for example yeah now will become like this with the uh, values most of the time lower than they were in the original 
on in the original envelope. Uh, that means at the higher frequency values, uh, the spectrum will not be as bright uh, if we will integrate its spectrum. The frequency val values will not be as bright as they were, as they would be without this power operation. Another thing is that you can see I take this, I, I, I introduce this uh, F RNG, which is a frequency range or fundamental range. <coughs> fundamental range array, and I use zeroth element and first element, or zero, index zero and index one elements. Um, why I do that? Basically, that means that I will limit my designed instruments to the specific range of uh, of uh, pitches or the registers. Probably in, in Russian, it's called register. Um, so that the lowest frequency for this instrument will be the 50 hertz, and the highest will be uh, 60 hundred hertz. This allows me to safely map this range to other parameters, and if I don't want to have aliasing from Nyquist, for example, I can control this, the, the modulational index with uh, this range. Yeah. For example, what I do here, because I don't want the noise to be um, uh, very prominent for the low frequencies, so what I do is I map the frequency range to the range from 0.1, which will be from fi for 50 hertz, to 1, which will be for 1600, and the other values will be mapped linearly from to, to this range. And this allows me to have more prominent low frequencies without much noise in them, and less uh, prominent, more smeared high frequencies. Because, as you usually know, in FM, they are usually uh, very harsh sounding ones. So we have to control the modulational index for high frequency. It's very good practice in FM to map the modulational index to the fundamental that we want to generate. So that's all. That's all for now. Uh, if you want, you can, of course, from here you can play with the spectrum lots of different ways. You can create the plethora of uh, different timbres by playing with this uh, stretch parameter. And of course, you can have di several modulators with different stretch parameters instead of having one. I have one here only for a reason of simplicity to show the idea. And this idea was actually used um, by uh, several uh, uh, companies. I get well, let's say Yamaha in the first place because they had the synthesizer. I don't quite remember the model now, but they have one dedicated FM synthesizer that was doing just this. And because at that time the, um, the, the, the computational powers were not that big, so they were trying to solve the problem of uh, sweeping the formats, the one I described before, just using the FM synthesis methods, yeah? But these days we don't have that problem, we can use subtractive all over the way. The calculation power is more than enough for that. Uh, according to James McCartney, you can find in the internet, he is um, lecture on the timing precision in super collider in different systems. These days you don't even have to use these KR things. You can only limit yourself to audio rate signals. For me it's just some kind of well I'm used to it. Whenever I see the uh, see the reason to make something more computationally efficient, I, I do that. Another thing is and I didn't touch, and I wanted to touch in this lecture, but I, then I saw that it's too much information. <coughs> Is that the power operation that I 
in all those four now four lectures here yeah, four four videos i use this power operation on envelopes actually it's not the best thing to use uh, i don't know the latest latest versions of super collider but in some previews i had really bad experience with it why because of how it's calculated and i will talk on that a bit later let this be a little announce and uh, talk about the implementations that probably are better will do the same thing but i better computationally so that's for later now we have this one you can play with this one variety of ways i just play here with one velocity parameter and don't touch all of those but of course those are here to be played cheers <laughs>